Uh, greetings of the day, dear students. In this video, we are going to discuss about the brake test on DC shunt motor. And this is the experiment where you are going to do in your uh, laboratory also, right? If you are having lab on this subject and this experiment you are going to perform in the laboratory. Now, we will also discuss one example on this topic, uh, how to do the calculations, how to find out the efficiency from the data obtained, right? Uh, here, observe this brake test is performed to find out the or to determine the efficiency and the losses of a given machine of a given machine. One drawback with this method is the entire power is wasted. So that is the drawback because you are going to apply uh, some brake on the drum the power input is wasted. But of course it is a simple method. This method is simple but uh, the drawback is the input energy is wasted. Right? Now uh, if you observe this diagram, this is the three point starter where it allocates the line, line side, A armature, observe this is connected to the armature winding of the motor, A for armature and F field winding armature, F is connected to the field winding. In your laboratory, you can observe on the field winding, uh, Z, Z, Z will be the variable used to represent the field winding, Z, Z, Z. And in series to the motor armature, an ammeter is connected to measure the current drawn by the uh, armature, IL, this, this, sorry, IA. This is the current drawn by the armature, IA. And uh, you will have an voltmeter connected in parallel this measures the applied voltage V and uh, you used to have a field rheostat, observe a variable rheostat, right, connected in series to the field winding. This is useful to vary the resistance so that the input current flowing to the field winding can be varied, right. So the excitation can also be changed, the amount of field current flowing to the field winding can be varied, right. So a re variable rheostat connected in series to the field winding. And you will have a brake drum and uh, on slowly applying the load by tightening the springs, you can observe the readings on the springs S1 and S2, the spring balances we used to have and DPST, double pole, single throw switch and this is the fuse element for protection sake. So this is all the uh, different elements present while doing the experiment, while doing the experiment, right? Now coming to the procedure, how you used to perform this, let me observe. What happens is, initially the starter will be in the off position in your laboratory, right? And the field rheostat is kept in the minimum position, right? Now the DC supply is applied by closing the switch. Once the switch is closed, slowly the motor is to be brought to its rated speed. Most of the times it will be around uh, some 1500 RPM. Right in your laboratory, you can observe that uh, 1500 around 1500 RPM. So slowly we will bring the machine to its rated speed 1500 RPM. Now you will apply the load. You will apply the load gradually in steps by tightening the belt. Right. So at different steps, you used to note down from the meters provided here. You used to note down the voltmeter reading ammeter reading and also the current flowing to the armature and current flowing to the field winding right all this uh, and also the speed the speed spring balances readings all those things we have to note down clear now once you have noted down the readings like this you will proceed until the it's a rated speed uh, sorry uh, until it's a rated current for example if the rated current on the machine is for example some 6 amps Slowly you will apply a load, 6 amp, if it is 6 amp, right, slowly you will apply a load which draws some current 1 ampere and you will further tighten the belt, it draws some current 2 amps, 3 amps, like that. Slowly in steps, by tightening the belt, you will, uh, you will proceed until it's rated current, rated current in steps, in steps, right. 
Now, depending upon the readings, S1 spring balance 1 reading, S2 spring balance reading, 2 spring balance 2 reading, R radius of the drum in meter, N motor speed in RPM, motor speed in RPM. Now, our target is to calculate the efficiency, right? With respect to the efficiency, it is simply output power by input power. Now, input power, input power drawn by the machine, applied voltage V into, if you observe with respect to the motor, the uh, applied current I, some part will go to the armature and some part will go to the field winding ISH. So, I equals to IA plus ISH, right? So, V into bracket of IA plus ISH. This will be our input power in watts. Now, output power is simply omega t, omega t. But what about torque? Force into perpendicular distance. Uh, torque equals to force into perpendicular distance. Here in this context, it is the radius. Now, force, mass into acceleration. Here, the mass is to obtain by the differences in the spring balance readings. Spring balance readings. A, we will take it as 9.81. So, like this, we will call calculate the torque. Torque is given by 9.81 into S1 minus S2 into R. Power output, omega t. Power input, V bracket of IA plus ISH. IA is the armature current. ISH is the shunt field current. Now, the efficiency is obtained by or calculated using the formula output by input. Right? This is how uh, you will uh, do the calculations. You will uh, you will understand it better. I'm doing a small uh, problem, right? Now, uh, dear students, uh, please observe uh, this uh, test can be used for uh, only small motors because uh, while performing this test, large amount of heat will be generated at the brake, and frequently have to cool the drum, the brake drum, by pouring some water into the brake drum, right? So, large amount of heat is generated. So, that is one drawback. And the graphs you can plot from this data is efficiency versus output you can plot, torque versus output, and also speed versus torque can also be plotted uh, from this experimental data. Clear? Right. Now, let me do or discuss a small problem. The following readings are obtained when doing a load test on DC shunt generator uh, motor using brake drum spring balance readings 10 kg and 35 kg diameter of drum 40 cm it is equals to 0.4 meters speed of the motor in rpm 950 rpm applied voltage 200 volt line current 30 amps calculate output power and efficiency calculate output power and efficiency dear students please observe the data given right spring balance s1 10 kg s2 35 kg diameter of drum it is given in centimeter please express it in meters diameter is given observe but we want radius so radius is 20 centimeter it is 0.2 meter radius radius of the drum is 0.2 meter now the speed in rpm it is given 950 rpm but we want omega we want to express it in radians per second right 2 pi n by 60 2 pi n by 60 okay now 2 into 3.143 into 50 uh, into 950 divided by 60 right it is around it is 99.53 radians per second 99.53 radians per second now the applied voltage the variable is v 200 volt line current 30 amps power output omega t we will do that torque force into perpendicular distance in the place of force S2 minus S1 into G. Distance is radius in our context. 
35 minus 10 into 9.8 into 0 0.2 49 newton is the torque 49 newton meter of course sorry the units are missing i think newton meter right now power output omega t omega is 99.53 torque is 49 one we will get power output as 4876.97 watts now what about power input power input input power power formula p equals to vi in this context the load current drawn is 30 amps terminal voltage is 200 volts so the power on power output is sorry power input is 6000 watt 6000 watts so from this efficiency equals to output power by input power 4876.97 divided by 6000 and uh, the efficiency is 81.28 percent efficiency is 81.28 percent clear so this is how we can perform the brake test on dc shunt motor this experiment you are going to do in your laboratory also clear in this entire discussion dear students please observe uh, these basics from back to front let me proceed efficiency output by input input power v into il il ia plus ish power output omega t right torque force into perpendicular distance force 9.81 into s1 minus s2 right now the speed in rpm we have to express in in radians per second therefore omega equals to 2 pi n by 60 so these are the basics required to understand this experiment clear right so dear students uh, uh, once again i request you to share this application to as many students as uh, possible right uh, so that it will be helpful uh, for them to understand the subject basic electrical and electronics engineering right thank you